brought to you by L&M, the modern cigarette that lets you get full, exciting flavor through the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Nice clear evening, Mr. Dillon. It'll be cold before morning, though. Maybe old Doc ain't too far wrong. Oh, what about? Well, he claims winter's coming early this year. He claims we'll have snow before the end of the month. <laughs> He's just passing along Indian talk, Chester. They're all claiming the same thing. Evening, Marshal. Oh, how are you, Chester? Miss Cobb? How do you, Marshal? Chester. Evening, ma'am. Get up there. I do declare, Mr. Dillon, that that ain't the most dilapidated old buggy I ever seen anywhere. Yeah, Jezra believes in getting full value out of things. Making do, as he calls it. Mm. Yeah, let's get something to eat, huh? Well, now, eating is something I get full value out of. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, let's sit over there by the window. Huh? Mm. That team of Jezra's could do with some eating. The way their bones are sticking out. Ah, uh, Jezra figures fat on a horse is a sign that grain's being wasted. Well, you shortly, Marshal. Okay. Mm-hmm. He must figure the same thing about women. Ms. Cobb's bones were sticking out some, too. Yeah, he probably works her half to death. Has to to run a farm that size without any hired help. Well, they sure do keep to themselves. Ah, uh, people just don't take to Jezra much. He's got a pretty cold way about him. But it's hard to say what she's like. Mm, that poor lady don't even open her mouth lest he tells her she can. Plain mousy, that's what she well, What are you figuring to eat, gents? Well, what do you got? Uh, stewed beef and bile greens. Uh, well, uh, I guess that's what we'll eat, huh, Chester? Mm-hmm. All right, I'll bring it right out. Boiled greens. Boiled Jimson weed more than that. What? Hey, that was up the end of the street, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, come on, Chester. Let me through, will you, please? Will you let me through? Hang on to that horse. It's mighty spooky. What's the trouble, Jezra? Marshal, you've allowed this town to become a sink of iniquity, a whited sepulcher. Oh, is that so? A town of painted Jezebel, scoundrels, and murdering assassins. The name should be changed to Sodom or Gomorrah. You all right, Miss Cobb? Somebody tried to kill us, Marshal. They were standing right over there in the shadows. Minerva, you'll kind of remember a woman's place. Marshal asked me. Silence. Sorry, Jezra. Did you get a look at him? We did not. The coward struck in the darkness. It was only a miracle we escaped. Uh, any of the rest of you see who fired those shots? Hey, you're the law here, Marshal. I demand an accountant of this outrageous assault. Jezra, do you know anybody who might think they got a reason to kill you? I never had an enemy in my life. Well, it looks like you got one now. <laughs> yourself of old-fashioned ideas. Why don't you live modern? Live, live modern. Live, live, live modern. Free
Stay young. Freshen up your taste. Smoke an L&M. Why are more people changing to L&M than to any other cigarette? Because only L&M lets you enjoy full, exciting flavor through the pure white miracle tip. L&M draws easier. Tastes richer. Smokes cleaner. So free up. Freshen up your taste. Get full, exciting flavor. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Smoke L and M. It's America's fastest growing cigarette. What you mean, Doc? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, I've got to make this prescription look real authentic. Oh, what do you mean? Uh, these are fooling pills. I've got nothing in them but sugar and some chalk and a little gum arabi to bind them. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the kind of medicine folks get from you. Oh, no. It's the kind old Mrs. Prudlin gets. As long as she figures they help her. That's all that's necessary. At least they don't do her any harm. <laughs> nothing wrong with her anyhow, except in her mind. <laughs> Oh, there you are. We'll let that sit a while and dry, and then... Oh, say, you found out yet who fired those shots at old Jezra Cobb? No, Doc. Not a hint. That's a funny thing, Matt. I don't think I know a soul in Dodge that likes old Jezra. Yeah, I know, Doc. But nobody really hates him, either. They just stay clear of him as far as they can. Yeah, that's just it. He just isn't the kind of a man to rouse up strong feelings in anybody. Good or bad. Well, he must have roused some and whoever tried to kill him or kill her. I don't even know for sure which one they were after, him or his wife. Uh, you busy, Doc? Huh? Oh. Well, come right in, Kitty. Hello, Kitty. Matt, what are you doing here? <laughs> well, he's hiding from Jezra Cobb. <laughs> what? <laughs> don't mind, Doc. Um, I'll step outside, Kitty. If, uh... Oh, no, no, don't go, Matt. I just wanted to get something for a headache, Doc. Oh, it's too bad. Well, dip yourself some water there. <laughs> Here are some pills I just made up, Kitty. Oh, not Doc. Not... <laughs> the formula came straight from Boston. Well, they can take care of this headache. They're miracle pills. That's exactly what they are. Here you are. You swallow a couple of those. Oh, thanks, Doc. I personally guarantee those to stop the world's worst headache in one minute flat. Uh, yeah, they, uh, they've done wonders for uh, Ms. Prudlow. Mrs. Prudlin. Uh, pay no attention to him, Kitty. He, he's all upset over that shooting. Well, I could name a few people who aren't upset over it. Oh, which people? Some of the girls at the Long Branch. He drops in about three times a year. Jezra Cobb at the Long Branch? Old, self-righteous Jezra. And every time it means trouble. He always drinks too much. He bothers everybody. Bothers him, huh? By trying to reform him. And it's the girls who always get the worst of it. He... D now, who'd have thought it? He calls them painted Jezebels. Says he means to cure them of their transgressions. Of course, the only cure he seems to know is to grab a cane and beat the daylights out of any of them he can get his hands on. I didn't know Jezra was that bad. You ask some of the girls, Matt. Daisy or Billy Bell. Yeah, I will, Kitty. Uh, Doc, could I have some of those pills to take with me? Now, look, uh, Kitty, Doc was just playing. They're real good, Doc. My headache's all gone. What'd you start to say, Matt? Uh, nothing, Kitty. <laughs> nothing. Forty-eight hours, Marshal, and you've accomplished nothing. I demand legal action. You haven't helped things any by lying to me, Jezra. Lying to you? You told me you never had an enemy in your life, but two or three young ladies over at the Long Branch disagree with you. <laughs> Dance hall girls. Maybe so. But I'd sure hate to have them looking at me over a set of gun sights. Abandoned. Painting their faces. 
cavorting in public to the devil's music. Then stay away if you don't like it before you get a bullet in your back. It wasn't a woman who fired them shots. A woman wouldn't have to fire them, Jesuit. She could get a man to do it for her. Then why don't you jail them girls if they're plotting to kill me? I don't have any proof of anybody plotting anything. You're in league with the adversary, Marshal. You're aiding and abetting the forces of evil. Let me tell you something, Jezra. I'll aid and abet anybody's right to live his own life according to his own lights. As long as he's within the law. Mr. Dillon, I... Yeah, what is it? Uh, could I see you a minute? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, what's the matter, Chester? Well, it's Miss Kitty. She wants over at the Long Branch right away. Oh, what for? Well, it seems there's a fellow there that's been drinking real heavy, Mr. Dillon, uh, talking too much. Oh? A- and Miss Kitty heard him say he'd been offered $300 to kill old Jezra. of old-fashioned ideas. Why don't you live modern? Live modern. Live, live, live modern. Free up. Freshen up your taste. Smoke an l and Today, all over the country, more people are changing to l and than to any other cigarette. And it's all because only l and gives you full, exciting flavor through the pure white miracle tip. L&M draws easier, tastes richer, smokes cleaner. So free up, freshen up your taste, live modern, change to L&M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Smoke an L&M. It's America's fastest growing cigarette. Playing poker over here with a house dealer and a couple of cowboys. You been in here before? Yeah, just during the last week. He's a drifter, I guess. Goes by the name of Puggy Rado. There. That's him, Matt, on the far side of the table. Uh-huh. Yeah, he looks like a saddle bum. And he was making out real braggy for a while. Fastest gun in Texas, that kind of talk. But I guess he knew he'd gone too far when he said that about Jezra Cobb. He shut up tight right after all right, Kitty, I'll try to get him away from that table. Wait a minute. I think he's coming over here. Yeah. Reckon you're the marshal, ain't you? That's right, yeah. I reckon she heard what I said sent for you. That's just what I figured you would do. Hold Matt. it, hold it, Marshal. You make one move toward that gun, and I'll put a bullet right in her back. You got your hands off me. Take it easy, Kitty. You tell her, Marshal. Tell her me and her leaving now. And if anybody lays a hand on a gun, there's going to be a pretty corpse on the floor. I told you to let go. Take him out. Drop that gun, Rado. Not a chance. Are you all right, Kitty? Yeah, I'm all right. Thanks, Matt. Well, I had to kill him now. There was no time for anything else. Marshal. Marshal. Uh, was, was that the man? Yeah, it looks that way, Jezra. He was claiming somebody had offered him $300 to kill you. Why, well, that, that's the fellow who... Who what, Jezra? Why, well, he stopped in at my place last week begging a handout. Uh, did, uh, did you say $300? No, that's right. 
Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> well, I got to be getting on home, Marshal. Got stuff to tend to. Got a lot of things to tend to. Well, forevermore, what come over him so sudden? I don't know, Chester. But I think I can guess. such a poor built house, ain't it? Yeah, it sure is. Uh, good evening, Miss Cobb. I, I do, Marshal. Chester. Miss Cobb. Your husband got home yet, Miss Cobb? He's out there in the barn. Won't you come in and set a spell? Uh, yes, we will. Thank you. As a matter of fact, Miss Cobb, uh, you're the one we rode out here to see. Ah, that's right kind of you, Marshal. Now, you two set you down there at the table. Just this minute, took a wild plum pie out of the oven. Well, uh, no, no, thank you, Miss Conn. Well, I my... don't often get to feed callers. You ain't going to deprive me of the chance. Maybe we could just taste it a little dab, Mr. Dillon. All right, Chester. I, uh, always had the impression that, uh, you were opposed to visitors, Miss Cobb. Oh, I love to have folks come. Jezra ain't never been one to encourage it. Oh, I see. The righteous must turn their faces from the world. For the world is the cradle of sin. That's what Jezra always said. There you are, piping hot. My gracious, that smells good. Well, eat hearty. There's plenty more. And it'll just go to waste. Jezra's never cared too much for plum pie. Miss Cobb. How long have uh, you and Jezra been married? Twenty-seven years, Marshal. Twenty-seven years. Uh-huh. And over those years, Miss Cobb, how many times did he beat you? Hundreds of times. For my transgressions, he told me. He used to read me from the good book that a husband's got a right to do that. I, I ain't never learned to read myself. But last month I asked Reverend Blouse, and he said there weren't nothing like that in the good book. Well, uh, maybe Jezra's got his own version. He lied to me, that's what he done. And if he'd lie about that, then... Well, I reckon you know, don't you, Marshal? Yes, ma'am. About you offering money to that drifter who rode through here last week. That you hired him to kill Jezra. Yes, ma'am, I guessed it. Jezra did, too. Well, I figured he did the way he acted in town. He come home and told me about you having to shoot the man. Then he asked me for our savings. And I got it for him. He sat down here and counted it. And when he seen it was the same as that fellow had been talking about, $300, then he knowed for sure. Uh, what did he say? Oh, nothing much. He just sat here a while, smiling at me kind of in that cold way of his. His... Glory smile, I always called it. And then he got up and went out to the barn. And, of course, I knowed what he was going for. What do you mean? He was aiming to fetch a hickory stave. He always keeps some out there to mend fences. I declare, Mr. Dillon, a man like that ought to be... Well... 
I think, ma'am, maybe I better go have a little talk with Jezra. Won't be no use, Marshal. Just won't be no use. I think it will, ma'am. Listen to me, Marshal. You're wasting your time. I'm trying to tell you. When he went to fetch that stave, I knowed what he was aiming to do. And I followed him out to the barn. Yes? I stood real close, Marshal, so I wouldn't miss. And I pulled the trigger four times. I put the gun there in the cupboard. I figured you'd be wanting it. Jezra ain't never gonna beat me no more. You sit right back down there and finish your pie. moment, our star, William Conrad. If your daily routine never varies, chances are you're heading for a great big case of monotony. Everybody needs a break once in a while, and sometimes a vacation just once or twice a year isn't enough. But a break once a week would more than fill the bill. What could you do with that leisure time? Here's the answer to that. You can vary your routine with a fascinating and vital pursuit. Spotting planes for America's Ground Observer Corps. It's exciting... It's interesting, and just two hours a week of your spare time is all that's needed to keep up the 24-hour schedule of the GOC. Men and women from teenage up can help the Air Corps cover the blind spots in our radar system by volunteering for the Ground Observer Corps, a civilian component of the Air Defense Command. You'll be trained and supervised by officers and airmen of the Air Defense Command to spot planes in your area. Find out from your local civilian defense office how you can be a civilian ground observer. This has been a public service message by CBS Radio. And now, William Conrad. You know, when a bad man riding a good horse came into Dodge looking for trouble, how likely as not he got a bullet hole placed in him. And the horse went to the man who did it. And that was the West. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The script was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Meston. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Ray Kemper and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Virginia Gregg, Ralph Moody, Don Diamond, and John Daner. Parley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke.